<clears throat> Hi guys, it is a blissfully cool and cloudy Friday, June 8th, 2012 here on The Rock, South Austin, Texas. And we might actually be getting some rain in the middle of this uh, rant, which could go on for quite a while. It's not really a rant. This is just uh, fulfilling a request from a friend of mine who, who watched my bear video about my uh, interactions with a bear and requested that I tell some of my crazy stories about my life as an alien abductee. Now, this portion of my life spanned 22 years. Uh, I'm just, I'm just gonna, gonna try to whittle this down to about three or four stories and I'm gonna try to put it all in the same rambling uh, talk up here on the rock. So if you wanna hear about how I whipped a space alien's ass, uh, and how you too, if you're suffering from this shit, how you too can uh, whip a space alien's ass and, and how to put 22 years of hell in, uh, in, in, into a, a rant and rein it in. So this started all, when I was about 18, I started uh, what a lot of people would call uh, alien abduction. Now, I have mentioned this, I've touched on this in other rants, but this is somewhat my own story. Uh, guys, I want to state from the get-go that I have never been abducted by space aliens, floated out the window, put on a UFO, flown off into the cosmos, and, and then poked and probed and tested and all that uh, for the simple reason that alien abduction does not exist in the in the physical realm in the ob objective consensual reality world of metal UFOs flying in from outer space okay uh, as I have said in other rants if you want to find out what alien abduction is you will read the book DMT, The Spirit Molecule, by Dr. Rick Strassman. Uh, there's also a YouTube video version of that same book, but the book is much better. And you will learn in that book that alien abduction is, is a, a, your pineal gland, your pineal gland dumping DMT into your system uh, while you are sleeping at night and gives you all of these bizarre experiences among them what modern people have called alien abduction. So for years I suffered for this from age 18 to 40 and, and I don't use the term suffering lightly. Uh, because believe me guys when you were having one of these episodes there's nothing funny about it. You, you're absolutely terrified for your life that you're being, you know, abducted by space aliens and taken off on a UFO. <clears throat> uh, but but, but th this is my, I, I'm, I'm just trying to pick out a few of my own stories. But anyway, this has been going on. This started in my own life. And in 1978, when I was 18, is when I had my first episode, as I say, in, for the next 22 years. But it, it was, I believe it was 1996, you know, that I had been dealing with this. And, and my sister, my big sister Mary, was just finally got fed up with it. Uh, by 1996, it was completely consuming my mind, all of this alien abduction shit. And so, now, now this is my sister who I've mentioned before, used to have recurring nightmares when she was a child about being kidnapped by giant grasshoppers. 
she thought everyone had dreams about being kidnapped by giant grasshoppers. I have never had a dream about being kidnapped by giant grasshoppers. I don't know about you. But anyway, it was this sister who uh, had finally heard enough of this, this alien abduction nonsense. And so she uh, set out to cure me. Of this, uh, of this fantasy that I was was being abducted by space aliens, and uh, so she referred me to a psychic in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, where she lived. Uh, this guy's name, I believe, was Richard Moon. I might not be. I'm 99% I'm sure his last name is Moon, and I believe his first name is Richard. Anyway, so she told him. She said this guy knows what he's talking about. That he will let you know what is really going on in your brain. So she tells me to call him to to make an appointment with him. She was even going to pay for an appointment with this guy. So I call Richard on the phone. She takes off up to her farm in Vermont. And uh, so I call this Richard Moon fellow, and as soon as he answers the phone, I, and, and here's what I said to him, uh, I don't even think I told him my name, I said, I said, I have been having some dreams, and he broke in, and he goes, I don't deal with dreams, I don't deal with it, I can't help you, sorry dude. Uh, and, and, and he was getting ready to hang up on me and I said, well, you, you know, just, just, just one minute, you know, because what I wanted to do was, was be hypnotically regressed back to some of these episodes. And I said, can, do you, can you at least give me the name of a, of a hypnotherapist? Uh, that you work with and so he said here's a name and he, and he gave me a name of this woman and and he slams the phone down I mean the guy was unbelievably rude he I mean he did not uh, he did not want to speak to me for more than 30 seconds so anyway I did jot down the name of this hypnotist so uh, I called this woman and she had zero experience in hypnotically regressing uh, alien abductees. She knew nothing about the subject, uh, which was fine with me because I wanted some, uh, you know, someone who was not into this stuff. A, you know, someone with a completely neutral mind on the subject. I don't know what she really thought about it, but she she was very professional. So I meet with her down in the, down in her office. And uh, I ask her to record the session. I, I'm just talking not, not video recorded. This was in the mid-90s. So this at this point was just an audio cassette. So she turns on the audio cassette. And uh, she's sitting at her desk. And I'm sitting in this big, heavy, comfortable chair, kind of like my Barca lounger up at the trailer. And she... And she begins to regress me back to this episode of from 19 uh, around 1980, one of these real powerful uh, abduction episodes. <clears throat> and at first, I would I started actually strangling myself with my hands. I mean, I put my own hands around my own neck and started strangling myself. To, uh, uh, to where I could not even talk about this. She wanted to bring me out of the, out of the regression. I said, no, 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 I want to do this. So we, we come back up and then I go back under a second time. And uh, in this episode, it was, I was, I was lying in my bed in, uh, in, in this house that I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia. And from my recollection, I remember my sister, the one I used to get, uh, you know, kidnapped by giant uh, grasshoppers. She came in from the other part of the house, and I was having one of these paralysis episodes. It's sleep paralysis, is what this is. The, the scientific explanation for this is called sleep paralysis. It's absolutely terrifying. I was in the middle of one of these sleep paralysis episodes and my sister came in and, and, 
and stood over my left shoulder. Now this thing about a little man on the left shoulder is re totally recurring in these things. These, these little creatures, whatever they are, usually approach over your left shoulder. Uh, and this is where my sister came in. So it was at the point in the episode where the hypnotist told me to look over my left shoulder and, and report to her what I saw standing there. My memory was that it was my sister. Well, I'm sitting here in this heavy chair under hypnosis, way down under hypnosis, and I turn around and look over my left shoulder at who I remember being my sister, and that is the last thing I remember, guys, cause when I did that, I, I screamed. And, and, and I was so terrified that, the, that the, this, this big, heavy, easy chair went over backwards. I fall out of the chair onto this woman's carpet. I, we were sitting there in, in her office and, uh, and I fall uh, on the carpet and, and, I'm, and I'm pulling myself across the carpet. I mean, I'm screaming in absolute terror. I actually had carpet burns across my face where my face was being dragged along the carpet and I pulled myself, you know, fleeing in terror from whatever this thing was over my left shoulder and I actually smacked my head into the wall on the other side of this woman's thing. When, and when I came to after smacking my head, this poor woman, she was up on her desk. She had climbed up on her desk totally freaking out, you know, clapping her hands, doing everything she can to pull me out of this. And uh, she, she was more freaked out than I was. She had never encountered anything like this in her entire hypnotist career. So anyway, this whole thing was recorded on cassette tape. And for any of you guys who have studied alien abduction, you know where this story is going. We went to play the tape back. The tape recorder was working fine. There was nothing on the tape. It's like someone had gone in there and erased the cassette tape. There was not one word of what had happened. Zero recording of it. So there was that episode. So I said, well, this is really, uh, so now the mystery had only deepened what the hell this was. And guys, you know, for the record, I, I never thought that I had actually been uh, kidnapped by space aliens on, on to UFOs. My left brain uh, Virgo journalism training uh, discernment and critical thinking uh, left brain would not allow this, still does not allow this. So, uh, my sister comes back from uh, Vermont at this point, and, and I report this to her. And uh, so now she uh, suggests that it, is, that it is time to find another hypnotist. That the psychic had gone nowhere, the, uh, the uh, hypnotist had gone nowhere. So now she decides that she's going to get more involved and that we're going to videotape me being regressed. Okay, so I guess I don't know who it was who found the second hypnotist. I believe her name was Ann Coco, but I'm not sure about that. That's what her name was. Real nice woman. Uh, who worked out of like a six-story office building in Atlanta, Georgia. And so, again, she was not into alien abduction. You need to be extremely careful if you're suffering from this and going to see some hypnotist who is into it. They will poison your mind and lead you on. So it's very important you get someone uh, who does not study this phenomenon. So we go there to, to, to this hypnotist's office. So guys, you got a picture. I'm, I'm there with my sister. She gets her video camera. And it, it's a very pleasant summer evening in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, 
perfectly fine weather, no rain, no storms, no wind, and, and it's just before dark that we get there. We, you know, we were, it was gonna be right around dark that this regression session was gonna happen. We get to the parking lot of the building and there's all these people milling around out in front of the building, including the hypnotist. Like, so we asked, what is going on? And they said it was the strangest thing that a few minutes ago, the entire building, the power went off in the building. In the middle of uh, all the other buildings around it were fine, but this one, I think it was like a six-story office building, this modern six-story office building in Atlanta, Georgia in 1996, with no explanation, the, the power to the building had shut off. So there were no lights, no air conditioning, nothing. So we're thinking that the videotaping could not go on, so there's no lights. And my sister said, you know, I've had enough of this craziness. So she goes off to uh, Walmart or Target to buy a bunch of candles. And uh, so uh, we set up all the candles in the room. And then at that point, I will say the lights did come back on. So whoever turned the lights off, I, I guess at that point figured that just to hell with it, this guy is going to go through with it. So we did videotape that session, which in the videotape and the audio with it both survived. And uh, my sister, she freaked out in the middle of it. She actually thought that I was having a heart attack. Uh, you know, because I was grabbing my my left shoulder. Uh, I have a visitor here on the rock. Don't knock over my camera. And uh, so it was pretty wild. It was pretty wild. I did not actually fall, knock the chair over. Now, I did fall out of the chair, although I did not knock the chair over and put rug burns on my face as I was absolutely freaking out. But it was just, it, it was just when I was regressed back again. This was another episode that we visited. Again, when, uh, when, when I looked over my left shoulder, what I saw was a, a giant white jack-o-lantern. It was a, just like a pumpkin, but instead of being orange, it was white, you know, with the face carved on it. And the hypnotist told me to look into the eyes of the, uh, the jack-o'-lantern and tell me what I saw. And when I looked into the eyes of this jack-o'-lantern, that is when I went, you know, erupted into this absolute terror mode of abject terror. I'm telling you guys, uh, you know, these stories are somewhat humorous years later, but, it, but if you or anyone you know suffers from this alien abduction phenomenon, it, it, it's, it, the alien abduction is not real. That's not what's happening. But believe me, when you're in one of these altered state episodes with this flood of DMT into your brain, it, it is absolutely terrifying. It's no joke to the people going through this. I mean, it, you know, and, and just imagine every time you go to sleep at night wondering if you're going to have one of these episodes. It, it, you know, it'll make a... It, you know, it would make an insomniac out of Rip Van Winkle. Uh, so anyway, after this little episode with the second hypnotist, uh, again, my sister says I need to call, she's insisting that uh, I need to call this psychic, uh, Mr. Moon, back again and be a little more insistent that, that he see me. So it has now been like uh, six weeks since I have spoken to this man. So for the second time, I call him up and, uh, and he answers the phone and, and, and I said, and, and my comment to him was, I'm sure you don't remember me. And he goes, he, he goes, I remember you. He goes, I know exactly who you are, dude. He goes, you're the UFO, uh, abductee. I said, what? 
I mean, this guy, I had never, we had talked a total of 30 seconds, and I had mentioned the word dreams to him. I had certainly never said the word UFO to, you know, to him in my entire life. And, and, and he was very agitated. I got the other end of the phone, and he goes, he goes, and he goes, then he goes, I tell you what, he goes, I'm going to give you a free reading. I think he charged like 65 bucks an hour for these readings, but he gave me a free one because he did not want me anywhere near his office. He was, uh, he was nervous talking to me on the phone. He, he, he goes, I am going to give you a free reading. And, you know, he's telling me, he goes, you would not believe how many idiots I get uh, calling me saying that they're, that they're being abducted by space aliens. Uh, and that I have to calm down and assure them that they're not being abducted by space aliens. And he goes, you dude, he goes, you are the genuine article. You are the genuine article. He goes, you are surrounded by some of the most evil energy in this universe. And he goes, they're crawling all over you. Uh, then he went on to tell me that uh, I was the psychic twin of Whitley Strieber. He might recognize the name Whitley Strieber. He's the guy who uh, wrote the, all that whole series of books about being uh, abducted by space aliens from his cabin in upstate New York. Uh, you might, you know, you might remember that. Uh, you know, he said that he went to a Whitley Strieber talk in Atlanta, basically to expose the guy as a fraud. That was his intention. And when he got there, uh, he, he said this guy had space aliens all over him, and he told me that I was Whitley Strieber's cosmic twin and that he was crawling with the most evil energy in the universe. And I asked him, uh, you know, what his advice to me was. And, and he just like, like, dude, I have no advice for you. He goes, I, you know, he goes, I don't know what to tell you that I am, uh, you know, really feel sorry for you. Well, this was in 1996. And uh, I continue to, to periodically have the, these episodes, whatever you want to call them, uh, where, the, well, it's sleep paralysis, and I would have these, in, in these dreams, you know, the UFOs would come in, and I would go into the sleep paralysis, and the little aliens would do what they're going to do. And uh, so th this continued to plague me. So then I decided to move to Austin, Texas in the year 2000, and, and I went out to Santa Cruz, California to work for a few weeks as a flagman on a road crew to make a bunch of money before I moved here to Austin in the year 2000. And while I was out in Santa Cruz, California, I found this sleep paralysis support group on the internet is and you can and again if you suffer from sleep paralysis or alien abduction i highly encourage you to uh to join this group so it was this this worldwide support group for people who suffer from this no joke phenomenon which is such a laughing stock to the rest of the world and you know where we all share our stories and blah 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 well this woman from London, England befriended me. So we were emailing back and forth. You know, her path and mine seemed to be very similar. She did not believe either that she had, uh, that she had been, you know, abducted by space aliens. But clearly something bizarre was going on. And it was my very last night in California before coming to Austin, Texas. I, was, uh, I had just turned 40 years old, 22 years of my life, over half my life. So her advice to me was before I went to sleep to actually invite the UFOs and these space aliens in, to, to, to invite them. Yeah, right. 
uh, you know, it's like inviting Godzilla into your house. And she said, invite, before you go to sleep tonight, invite them in, and then when they get there, she just says, she, she just says, to just work through your terror. Just, just, just face it. Face your, your terror uh, head along with these guys and don't run from them, just sit there and face off with them. And I, I'm thinking, yeah, right. Uh, so I say, what the hell, I had nothing to lose. So before I went to sleep that night, I actually intend, you know, made an intention. I said, okay, guys, I'm, I'm here. I am inviting you to come into my room tonight and, uh, and, and basically give me your best shot. So I went to sleep. I had not been asleep for one hour before where I am is back in another bedroom of the house where I grew up in in Atlanta, Georgia. It was an upstairs bedroom. And I'm lying like this and needless to say, the, the bedroom window of the other side of my left shoulder Okay, that's where I was, and then the UFO came and landed. I, I mentioned in a rant last week about my sister finding me out there when I was six years old, sleepwalking in the middle of the night, uh, and talking about that I was work that I had been at some instrument panel, some weird-looking electricity stuff. And you know, this when I was about six. And my 12-year-old sister found me out there after midnight. Well, that is where the UFO was. Uh, now, I'm, a, I'm an adult lying there in bed, but it was where the UFO had landed that night when, you know, where my sister found me outside that window. So I'm there. So the UFO comes in and lands outside the window, and I'm sitting there, and I go into this absolute terrifying paralysis episode. And sure enough... Here come the little guys, the you know, the little three foot tall, you know, you know the guys you've seen, those little guys, little gray guys with the big slanty eyes and shit. So uh, they're pouring through the window. I'm talking like 10 or 12 of these things, and they actually come into bed with me. You got to picture this. I'm not on their UFO. They don't take me out to their UFO. They come in, and, and I am in bed, and I'm covered by these little three foot guys and then who appears at the foot of the bed uh, you, you hear about all of these the, the big guy they, sometimes he's called the doctor sometimes he's called the watcher my mother in the, the last week of her life when she was dying of cancer and on morphine you know she was talking about uh, the, the big guy the, 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 the boss of this whole thing uh, so that guy appears at the, at the foot of my bed. And what happens is, so now it is when, when, when he appears there, then suddenly all of these little space aliens, they morph into, into ring-tailed lemurs. Good Lord, ring-tailed lemurs. Now, I want, I want to tell you guys that at this age, I had never had a hit of marijuana in my life. I never smoked marijuana until I was 42 years old. I had never taken a toke of marijuana in my life. Certainly had never had a mushroom or San Pedro. Uh, you, you know, I was 100% sober as the judge. So all these little, these little gray space aliens turn into these fuzzy little ring-tailed lemurs. And then the, the big space alien at the foot of the bed, she, it, he, she, it morphed into this, this gospel singer, this big old fat black woman gospel singer that I just heard in San Francisco. I cannot remember this woman's name or I'd love to send this story to her. So this space alien, this, the queen of the space aliens turns into this, this is absolute love filled uh, gospel singer bringing Jesus into people's lives and, and all of these fuzzy little lemurs are now having a great time and, and, you know flopping all over me and, and this woman she reaches her hand out and, and, you, and you hear a lot of this in the, in the UFO literature and in the, in the alien abductee literature and what she does she takes her index finger 
and she touches it to the tip of my nose. And she, she goes, you know, like this. And when she touched me, I went, I, I, I flew out the window. I, I, I got sucked through the window into this most unbelievable flying dream. I went into this gorgeous flying dream. So I'm way up there, you know, I'm at the top of the trees and I'm flying around there and I'm actually grabbing leaves. I've read about this where I'm actually grabbing leaves from the top of the trees and stuffing them in my in the pockets of my clothes so I can bring back the leaves as proof of what had happened. And I was flying all around my neighborhood uh, where I grew up in Atlanta and I remember seeing this dog walking down the street and he calls up to me and I dropped out of the sky to go talk to the dog and then uh, poof the dream disappeared and and that was it and, and I have never again since age 40 I'm now 52 I have had 12 years of, of freedom from this and uh, so this is how I kick these space alien asses and I am going to pass along to you the advice that she passed along to me and that's what you do if you are suffering from this or if you know anyone suffering from this please pass this on the, to them uh, number one to get the book DMT the spirit molecule by dr. Rick Strassman have them read that have them you know find one of these sleep paralysis support groups and join it and that will help but the main thing is is just the advice this woman gave that cured her and has cured me is that you before you go to sleep tonight you invite these little bastards into your life you know say come come on come give me your best shot and just don't go into the fear mode as hard as that's gonna be resist the fear mode choose love not fear and if you do not give into your fear into these bastards you, you might very well I think you will find that they will morph from these terrifying little scaly uh, uh, space aliens into these fluffy little lemurs and uh, and hopefully you will have a great flying dream and never endure this again in your life so I'm going to wrap this up here for what it's worth and, and and that is my story of how I beat the space aliens little asses and and, and I wish you the same uh, power because I know you got it in you to do it if I could do it so can you and uh, with that I'm gonna wrap this up and I guess I'll come at you tomorrow with a real rant about the end of the world but for now I'm gonna say Bye, guys.